Good morning, we welcome you to St. John's Episcopal Church in Fort Smith, Arkansas. We welcome you to this live streamed liturgical service from the Book of Common Prayer, Rite 2, page 355. As we look through the stained glass windows today, we see that we have the remnants of Hurricane Laura as the bands of rain are gently falling on this part of Arkansas, but we remember as we enter into our liturgy today the hurricane damage that has been done, those who have been displaced, even as far as Arkansas. And so we ask prayers and we hold these people in our heart as we begin our worship today. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We now continue with the readings from our lectionary, from our parishioners in their homes. A reading from Exodus. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, he led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see God, called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. 
And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing, flowing with milk and honey to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. A reading from Psalms. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him. And speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done. His wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant. O children of Jacob, his chosen. Israel came into Egypt. And Jacob became a sojourner in the land of Ham. The Lord made his people exceedingly fruitful. He made them stronger than their enemies. Whose heart he turned, so that they hated his people. And dealt unjustly with his servants. He sent Moses, his servant. And Aaron, whom he had chosen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A reading from Romans. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, There are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And from our gospel reading, And Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. When I was in seminary, I remember I couldn't wait to take Dr. Lewis's theology class. I just loved that man. I had taken a Christian education course, so I knew all about dyads and triads and cluster groups and helping people to understand and learn more effectively. I went into that class just knowing Dr. Lewis was going to use a lot of these methods. As I sat down in that class, he began lecturing and lecturing and lecturing. After a few classes, I couldn't even hear what he was saying because I knew what he was doing was against all of the principles of good religious education. And so I decided to straighten him out, sort of like Peter, I guess. So I made my notes, and I had my agenda for what I was going to say. I sat through a class, sort of making sure that I had all of the right bullet points. And then what did I do? I marched up after class, and I began to tell him how ineffective he was as a seminary professor teaching theology. He looked and said, I noticed you weren't very engaged. Have you noticed in the syllabus that I lecture in the first part of this class, and then we'll do things a whole different way in the second half of the class? And with that, I had not taken time to read my syllabus and to see that he was working a good religious education plan 
And I needed to listen to the first part, the lectures, so that I could engage in the second half of the class. Sort of like Peter, I think, going up to Jesus and rebuking Jesus and saying, that's not how it needs to go, Jesus. You don't need to go in, suffer abuse, be crucified, die, and whatever rising on the third day might mean. The truth is, is in all of our readings today, Peter, Moses, and Paul will all come with their righteous agendas. A righteous agenda is the list of actions that God should do to fulfill all of our purpose of what God should do in our world. The importance of a righteous agenda is that it narrowly focuses one aspect of God's kingdom, and everything else is expected to fit into that focus for God's action. In the Protestant movement of the 16th century, the righteous agenda was the focus of justification by faith. Religious debate was presented, sides were drawn, powers were unwilling to be moved, and so they were excommunicated. Splinter groups formed as denominations. Then new righteous agendas were surfaced, new denominations debated ideas, sides were drawn, powers were unwilling to be moved, and a new round of sort of excommunications took place. A new denomination was started with their own righteous agenda. These kind of agendas are really powerful. I think that's what Peter was feeling as he pulled Jesus aside to set him straight. These kind of religious agendas just strip away the complexity and variety that God has built into creation. It narrows the focus of what God wants to do down to one aspect that we can get our mind around. With that one focus, just about anything can be justified. With Moses, Peter, and Paul, we see how powerful that narrow focus of doing righteous work is manifested. Moses sees the injustice his fellow Hebrews are experiencing, and he feels justified in protecting a fellow Hebrew by killing the Egyptian taskmaster. Paul feels the threat of a new Jewish sect called Christians who are witnessing to a resurrected Messiah so Paul uses the law code to target and arrest those who see their faith differently. Peter hears Jesus talking about suffering an unjustified arrest at the hands of the government, crucifixion arising on a third day. Peter seeks to straighten Jesus out on what a Messiah is supposed to do. He'll even keep his agenda going until the time Jesus is arrested. And it's Peter who pulls out his sword and will attempt to kill a Roman soldier. In the encounter at the arrest, Jesus stops everything, stops Peter, and heals the wound of an enemy, the soldier who comes to arrest him. Jesus verbally corrects Peter as an adversary to what God's bigger story is going on in his life and ministry. And now Peter's narrow focus was not quite what was going to happen. Moses, Paul, and Peter all felt powerful as their righteous agendas took them down a road that was very far from the way of love, of grace, of freedom as God intended. The story of faith in each of these lives we read about today encounter an invitation to live into a faith that God's selfless love and service is at the center of all actions. Moses, after decades of running from his murderous past, encounters God in an experience of a burning bush that is not consumed. There, God reveals himself, and the illusion of Moses seeing that 
his violent action could somehow free the slaves. The vastness of God is explained in his name. I am who I am. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of the past, is also the God of the present, the God of I am, and the God who I will be. God is always there working. Working for freedom. Working for the dignity of all people. And bringing them to a place of a promised land. Peter is verbally corrected in our reading today. And it's shown as an act of mercy when Jesus heals the ear of the Roman soldier whose head was being swiped at. Peter experiences what this kingdom looks like in forgiving those who are despitefully using you. But it will take until Peter denies Christ three times before the cock's crow that Peter will understand and he'll begin to welcome what mercy and forgiveness truly feels like. It's then Peter who will lead the disciples to understand and welcome the Gentiles, those who are very different from the Jews, into the early Christian church. Likewise, we know in the book of Acts, Paul's encounter with Christ on the road to Damascus, his understanding was not of inclusion until he met Jesus Christ at the right hand of the Father. Grace through faith was revealed to him as the way that God was working in the world. The journey of faith is a path that has many twists and turns along the way. One twist is encountering the righteous agendas we bring to our life in faith. Moses, Peter, and Paul all have encounters that help them see the broadness of God's mercy, God's love for all that God created, and understanding God's invitation to living our life as a reflection of Jesus Christ in all that we do. Last week, we heard Paul say, don't be conformed to the culture of this world, but be transformed by the love and the presence of Jesus Christ. I think that's what happens, is we get so caught up in the culture that we conform to its many ways of being. And we resist being transformed by the presence of Christ within us in all that we do. So what does it look like when someone like Peter, who will welcome the Gentiles, Moses, who will lead people by God's power to freedom, or Paul, who persecutes, now becomes the one who will model what it is to live Jesus Christ's Sermon on the Mount. Our reading from Romans, I think, gives us a great picture of what it looks like to be a transformed person who no longer is trying to write the agenda for what Jesus is supposed to do, but the heart is opened so that Christ's agenda is written on our heart. Listen again what Paul wrote in Romans. Listen to how that transformation has taken place. And now he is living the agenda of Jesus Christ's Sermon on the Mount. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. But take thought for what is noble 
in the sight of all. Paul, you can see, has internalized the Sermon on the Mount by letting that become his teaching for this church in Rome. It's such a powerful thing to be able to open our ears to listen, to sh be shaped by Jesus Christ, to reflect his love, his grace, his mercy, as the values he processed, professed in the Sermon on the Mount. And we see articulated as Paul, as his agenda to his church in Rome. It's a powerful thing in our world to be able to be open and to listen. In the middle of September, you will be invited to participate in conversation groups around the highly divisive issue of race in our world. The Episcopal Church has put together a good program that will allow us to be able to read, watch, to learn, and then to reflect with each other in a way that can bring out God's agenda for the world, a place where God's grace God's love and God's mercy is the basis for all that we do as his church. Amen. Our worship continues with the Nicene Creed found on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. Where we believe in one God the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our service continues with the prayers of the people. For today's prayers of the people, we will be using Form 2, found on page 385 in the Book of Common Prayer. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world. For Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury. For Michael, our presiding bishop. For Larry, our bishop. For Father Mike, our staff, and the vestry of St. John for this gathering and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. For our nation as it struggles to end racism and injustice in all areas of our common life. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Today, we especially remember those who are affected by the coronavirus and those who work in the medical field. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for the students, the teachers, as they return to the classroom, 
protect them from harm and give them grace to learn and grow in goodness. Be with the students who will learn in a virtual environment. May they also be safe and be assisted in the special challenges that they will face in this new environment of learning. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially those who have died in this pandemic. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers for healing and health for David. Alana, B, Charlene, Chris, Michael, Jeannie, Wanda, Mariko, Janie, Carl, Tommy, Orland, David, Dennis, Tim, Rebecca, Pat, Bill, Malcolm, Hester, Jackie, Matt, Larry, and Matt. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our worship continues on page number 360 as we continue with our confession of sin. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourself. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sin through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. By the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now, my sisters and my brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. At this time, I would just have a couple of announcements to give before we turn it over to our vestry member, Angela Covey, today. Number one, next week, we begin with our virtual or on, on, uh, with our live streaming um, children's chapel. And so, parents, we want you to be able to offer Christian education in your homes. And so uh, we'll have some instruction with that, and uh, we'll have videos uploaded for you to be able to use uh, at whatever time works best for you in your home. But each Sunday, we'll have something new and fresh uh, along the lines of our children's chapel teachings. Also, as I mentioned at the end of my sermon, we will be offering groups to discuss the very difficult concept and discussions in our world around race. I invite you to consider being a part of this. Um, we'll help you and walk you through being able to uh, be on Zoom. And uh, we'll even be looking for if there'll be another alternative to be able to do that. But primarily, we'll be working on Zoom. And I hope that you'll consider being a part of a discussion group, uh, a way to engage our faith as well as engage the many things that are happening in our culture. And now we move to our announcement time from our vestry member, Angela Covey. Good morning. 
I'm Angela Kobe, a member of your vestry, and I wish to bring you up to date on a few things going on at St. John's. Although we are unable to meet, the work on the church is still going on. And right now, the heating and air is being worked on in the classrooms on the south side of the church, and classrooms are in the process of being rearranged so that when we are able again to get together, everything will be ready for our young people. But until then, virtual Sunday school will begin, and there is a link on the web page. So please have your children find this so that they may all join in. Our campaign for the future is still ongoing, and we thank all of you for continuing your monetary pledges. You know, the church may be closed, but we still run air conditioning, electricity, just like we do at home. And so, bills still come in the mail every day, which we have to meet. So we do appreciate you remembering to be always on time with monies that you might be pledging. Please stay safe, and remember to wear your masks. We must do everything in our power to try to curb COVID-19 so that we will be able to meet again sooner rather than later. Thank you.
Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer B. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with Moses, with Peter, with Paul, with John, with Mary, the mother of our Lord, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your heart by faith and with thanksgiving.
today, if you are watching and you are not able to receive the sacraments, but you'd like to as an act of faith, I invite, the, I invite you to pray this prayer with me. It's an invitation to a devotional sacrament. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace. Grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. May the spirit of truth lead you into all truth, giving you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and to proclaim the wonderful works of God and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bless us all now and evermore. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.